Hey everyone, welcome back to the Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. We have an update today on the Nintendo Direct for next week, and folks, if you watched my video yesterday, you're going to find out that someone was right all along. Beyond all of that, we have updates on games that want to come to Nintendo Switch, but for some reason they can't make them work with the Switch from a technical perspective. We also have updates on Sparks of Hope and Splatoon 3. Without further ado, let's get into the news. So our first story is just a quick look at all the various Splatoon 3 pre-order items that some of them you might still be able to get, but I don't know. I was on Nintendo Switch Reddit and I thought these looked really cool. So first up, in South Korea, you could get a literal Splatoon 3 camping chair. In Israel, they gave you Splatoon 3 hoodies. In Ireland, you could get a Splatoon 3 pencil case. In Canada, you got a sticker set. In the US, it depended on where you ordered from, so Best Buy gives you a keychain. On the eShop, you got double gold points. At Walmart, you got a squid plush. On Amazon, you got a pin. Uh, in the UK, if you bought it at the Nintendo online store, you were given a gym bag. And what I want to know is if you got some really neat pre-order bonuses with your copy of Splatoon 3 today, let me know what those were down below. I'm really interested. I know that personally, I only bought the digital version of the game on the Nintendo Switch eShop. So, I got the double gold points, which I'll use for $6 off a future game purchase. I'm actually banking up for Breath of the Wild 2. So our next story deals with SNK and King of Fighters, because it turns out they actually do want to bring King of Fighters 14 and 15 to Switch, but they can't for technical reasons. In an interview with Game Reactor, King of Fighters and 14 were mentioned as having problems on Switch. The following was said by SNK's Yasuki Oda. Yes, Obviously, if you have a Switch, you have a lot of our retro content, and you can play almost all of SNK's fighting games. And we investigated this issue even with King of Fighters 14 and 15. One of the biggest problems with King of Fighters is that you have three characters, and you have to load all of the resources between rounds and so on. It really didn't go well with the hardware specs and the technical limitations of Switch. It was something that really bugged us. We would love to do it, and we are always thinking about it, but at the moment, there are no plans. This is obviously an unfortunate case and maybe, you know, sort of a tip of the cap to, well, maybe it's time to get some more powerful Switch hardware at some point here. But yeah, it's unfortunate we couldn't get King of Fighters uh, 14 to 15. I would like to see them maybe figure that out. But at this point, they definitely aren't planning to do it, maybe until there is more powerful Nintendo hardware on the market. So yesterday we did a video dedicated to Nintendo Direct Rumors because Man, it was crazy. There was Jeff Grubb and Mike Minotti and all these people from Giant Bomb saying, hey, Nintendo might delay the Direct. And then there was people like, you know, Nate the Hate out there saying, now nah, the Direct's being announced on Monday. What I find really interesting about all of this is I kind of concluded that I didn't really think the death of Queen Elizabeth II, may she rest in peace, was a reason to delay a Direct, especially since delaying it would actually just push it closer to when her actual funeral occurs. Then Nintendo has marketing agreements as well with third-party companies, and nobody else is canceling their events. Ubisoft Forward still happened. The NFL game still happened last night. Tokyo Game Show is still happening. No one else is really delaying things, so it just kind of would be weird for Nintendo to do it. And obviously, Nate, hey, Nate Drake, he's the first person to say it would be announced on Monday, so if it is announced on Monday, hey, give him some credit for that. Now, Jeff Grubb actually updated the story today and not only told us why they were talking about how it could be delayed, but also a smidge of new details on the content in the Direct. So here's what he said. The reason that they were talking about the Nintendo Direct being delayed was because conversations inside Nintendo of America were about possibly delaying the Direct, so they were coming up with a contingency plan. Now, notably, the decision makers were sleeping at the time that Queen Elizabeth II passed away. However, Nintendo of America was just preparing in case Nintendo of Japan decided to do that. There was then conversations early this morning between Nintendo of America, Nintendo of Europe, and Nintendo of Japan, and it was decided that no, they are not going to delay the Direct, and it's going to be business as usual. In fact, the Direct might even happen earlier than planned, just to put a bigger gap between it and the September 19th funeral arrangements. Now, I find this to be quite interesting because I said the Direct was going to happen on Tuesday, and now Jeff Grubb is acting like Tuesday is probably the day. Maybe he was thinking it would be announced on Tuesday and come on Wednesday. Either way, Nate the Hate said Monday, and because he said Monday, we only ever get a 24-hour notice for a general Direct unless it's E3. So, 
I know some people were saying, hey, it'll be a two-day thing. You're thinking of game-specific directs. So when Nintendo announces a Breath of the Wild 2-only direct next year, they'll give you a two-day warning. But general directs have only ever been 24 hours, besides E3. That being said, Jeff Grubb also just reiterated some stuff he knows, like It Takes Two is going to be in the direct, and he's hearing pretty strongly that the Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, and yes, he's now including Breath of the Wild 2 with a name reveal as being on the same level as what he's hearing with the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. So now he is pretty sure all three of those things are there. And since he's hearing directly from Nintendo of America, that makes it a pretty strong case. That being said, he also expects Metroid Prime Remaster to be there because he, as he keeps telling everyone, knows it is coming out this holiday. Some other things that are maybe in the pipeline, he, he thinks maybe a Fire Emblem could be shown off, but he's not really sure. He just knows that there's a Fire Emblem ready to go, but he doesn't know that it'll be revealed here. He doesn't have a source on that. Anyways, that's the latest update on the Nintendo Direct stuff. And our last story today, I know we usually do five, but this one's kind of long because I got to read some huge interview quotes. We got some new information on Mario Plus Rabbids behind the scenes with development, and I always think it's really cool when we're looking at Sparks of Hope coming out next month that we can dive deep into the development side of things. We're going to hear more fact based information about gameplay and, and story and all that over the weekend from the Ubisoft Forward and we'll cover that on Monday but what I actually want to focus on here is behind the scenes because the director of the game did an interview and he had this to say about Sparks of Hope. With Sparks of Hope I said to Nintendo I'd love to directly control the characters. That is something that only Nintendo does in their own games. With Kingdom Battle we wanted to be sure that in the glimpse of an eye the player could recognize a Mario platform game from our tactical game. In Mario Plus Rabbids, it was a queue of heroes with Beepo in front of them. Many people were asking online, why is Beepo in front of them? Why is it a queue? The reason is that we're not a platform game, and we wanted to make sure players understood that. So the big challenge with Sparks of Hope was to change that, create a completely new experience with direct control of characters. Considering the increased ambition, and this is just a note from the actual article, the Mario Plus Rabbids team has grown substantially over the last five years. Like the original, Sparks of Hope is led by Ubisoft Milan, now operating out of brand new offices, but has had additional support from Ubisoft's Paris, Montepeller, Poon, and Chengu Studios. Overall, the team on this game is nearly four times bigger than the one that created its predecessor. However, Soliani says the biggest team change is less about size and location, but how they feel about what they're making. The team changed drastically for various reasons. The original team, after seeing the reception of the first game, got at E3, where people were queuing for six hours to play it and all the awards we got, they thought, okay, people love the game we are doing. They felt proud. This was really the first change. It was an understanding that they were doing something that was appreciated. So the team wanted to go further and do even more. Before, many people were too shy to say that we were doing a good game. But once players finally recognized it is a good, honest game, they finally allowed themselves to say that. The second change has been that if we want to continue with this adventure and be more ambitious with it, then we need more people. Sparks of Hope team is almost four times bigger than the one we had with Kingdom Battle, which means there is a lot of restructuring you need to do and a lot of management that you have to pull off. Also, because we are now divided across many different studios, we need to communicate and share a lot more. And when you increase a team to three or four times, the onboarding takes a lot of time just to get everyone on the same page, sharing the culture, sharing the love and passion for what we are doing. But I think we have been all lucky because I love working with all of them and it's really enriching because of all of the different cultures. He does later on in the interview go on to say that if their composers don't win awards, he's going to be extremely disappointed because... They, he thinks this is some of the greatest grandeur video game music of the year. Uh, so hopefully we hear some of that gloriousness and, oh man, let it just tickle our ears next month. Now look, folks, I'm really looking forward to Sparks of Hope. It's one of my most anticipated games. I know we have a lot of big games coming with Bayonetta 3 and obviously the Persona series and your Automata. And I mean, look, the Switch is getting slammed with games here, especially in October, but... Man, this is the one that I'm really looking forward to. So we're going to be playing a lot of Splatoon 3, you know, for launch later tonight. But I, besides that, I'm really, really looking forward to this. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. I am Nathaniel Rubble Chance from Nintendo Prime. That was our Prime 5. Even though it was just four stories, that last one's a bit long-winded. You guys are awesome and amazing. And I hope to catch each and every one of you in the next video.